Right, good morning, everybody. Welcome. Um, we're going to let everybody filter in. We do want to make sure that everybody uses the Q&A box if you have questions. And if you tried to go through the, the Lendistry platform, we will talk about that today as well as we have some updates. And we do understand that some people may have got not gotten through. Most people probably haven't. So we'll talk about that as well. But please fill in the Q&A box with any questions you may have. And we'll try to get to everybody's question today, if possible. And just so everybody's aware, today's presentation is both in English and in Tagalog. And so we have Susan De Los Santos from San Diego, um, who's going to do the translation. And so welcome, Susan, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And we have Scott Rogowski as well that will be joining us. And Manal Richa will be answering a lot of your questions. So if you could put, she'll be putting up some information for you as well. Um, there is some problems with the site. There's, you know, there's been a lot of activity. So if you didn't get through, um, we do just want to make sure that you are aware that this is not a first come first serve. So the, the, the first round goes through January 8th. So you have that entire time to apply. So don't feel that you have to get in today. And we're actually, talking to people, trying to tell them to wait a day or two, let the let the traffic die down a little bit, let them work through the kinks on the technology before you get in and try to fill this out. Yeah, good morning, everyone. This is Scott from uh, Northern California, SBDC. Um, like what Mike was saying is uh, this is being recorded. We are here to help you um, at no cost. Uh, the site is down. Um, and there's a lot of updates that we're going to go over today about the site, how to navigate through it. Um, and we have to really keep in mind is that the applications for round one is open until January 8th. So you have um, eight, nine days to apply. So you don't have to apply right now when the site is crashed. You can apply tomorrow and you'll be okay. And the, the site hasn't crashed. Um, let's use the right terminology. It's just, it's very slow and most people aren't able to, to get in and do what they need to. So our suggestion to you today after talking with Lendistry is to wait a day or two um, and then come back to it. And hopefully the traffic will have gone down. Lendistry will have um, gotten every, all the technology pieces fixed, but let's get into this and then we'll try to answer all your questions. And I see a lot of questions already. So let's let's go through this. Um, for those that haven't, that don't know much about this. So we're gonna skip through some slides. We're, going, we're actually gonna walk through the application today as well. Um, and I know that there's a lot of questions about the application itself, so we'll get into that. So let's start with this, the careliefgrant.com. This is the site to go to, probably not today to go to, but this is the site that you're gonna to wanna to go to um, to get into your application. Again, it starts today, but the first round <laughs> rolls through um, January 8th, and there's no, there's no special point value that you're given if you're, if you're in before everybody else. After the 8th, then they'll take a look at everybody that applied, and that's when they will, get, they will grant out funding. So whether you get in today, this morning, or you get in on Friday, January 8th, it's all the same. So take your time. If you're having issues, like I said, I would probably wait and do it in a couple of days, but that's just me. Um, but let me let Susan translate a little bit of what I just said. Wag ko kayo mabahala kung ano, kung hindi kayo makapag access sa computer ngayong araw na to because ang application ay mula ngayong araw, Desyembre, 30 hanggang January 8. So take uh, take your time and uh, para bago kayo mag, makapag uh, go through it will indicate in the uh, everlang difference ko let's say mag apply kayo kagad until the 8 but take your time. Hindi ho ito first come first serve basis. Okay. All right. Scott, just a little bit about this. We don't need to go through the whole thing again. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so good morning again. So about the program, it's a $475 million program um, that is administered through the state of California and the, the lender is Lendistry. They're the only lender uh, that is uh, using the, the state is giving the money to Lendistry and they're going to disperse it over to you as the grant. And uh, the first round launched, as Mike said this morning, mm -hmm. that's for 270, uh, 237.5 million. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's not yeah not first come first serve. I don't know if Susan wanted to translate yeah. that, but 
There's yeah. uh, there's a chart on here that you can see uh, based on the revenue size of your uh, business entity, mm -hmm. and that is a uh, thousand to a hundred thousand. It's a five thousand dollar grant. A hundred thousand to a million is a fifteen thousand dollar grant, and a million to two point five million is a twenty five thousand dollar grant. Yeah. So, ang lead district po ang ang bah ang bahala magdistribute ng mga pondo. Sa unang tipunin or first round, ang ang i-release na pondo ay 237.5 million. At ang structure ho ng pagbibigay ng grant, it will be kung anyone or kusino na, bi na business na may tao ng uh, kita mula isang libo hanggang 100,000, kayo po ay makakakuha ng 5,000 grant. And then anyone na, uh, an, uh, anumang business na may 100,000 to up to a million, ay makakakuha ng 15,000 grant. And uh, ang kumpanya na may uh, kita na isang mil, mahigit isang million hanggang 2.5 billion, ay makakakuha ng up to 25,000 na grant. Yeah, and I have seen a couple questions. So just want to make sure so this is based off of your tax returns, which we'll get to in a second. So mm -hmm. it is yeah. to the dollar, right? So if you did $950,000, you would qualify between a 100,000 and, and a million dollars. So you'd qualify for the $15,000 grant, grand, yeah. mm -hmm. right? So it's where, if you're a dollar shy of the million dollars on your tax return, <laughs> then that's unfortunately, they're doing it by the dollar. So we've learned mm -hmm. a lot of information from this morning to, to share with you about some some new things from Lendistry and the state's um, requirements. So it is, they're going to take that exact number off of your tax return and we'll get to those lines where they're at. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're a dollar shy, that then you fit <laughs> into the category that, that where you're at. You can't round up. So let's go to the, the again, next slide. Again, oh. please put all your questions in the Q&A. The chat does not get answered. Please put all questions in the Q&A. So, and we are going to walk you through the application today and try to answer questions as we go through it. So we're going to skip through this PowerPoint, and we're going to go pretty quick, so we're going to skip through a lot of it, but we'll send you out this PowerPoint as well. But to qualify as a small business, you can be a sole proprietor, a 1099, independent contractor, an S Corp, a C Corp, an LLC, um, and then many others, and that might be confusing on the application as well. You just, on your 2019 tax returns, and keep in mind, 2019, not 2020, they don't want your 2020 taxes. Mm -hmm. In 2019, that's the tax return they're looking for. If you didn't do 2019, then it's your 2018 you have to have done in yearly gross revenue, a minimum of $1,000 and no more than 2.5 million. If you're at 2.5 million and $1, you will not be eligible. You're $1 over. <laughs> Conversely, if you're at $999 of gross revenue, you'd be $1 shy of being able to apply. And I apologize, we're trying to give you the information of what we're learning, but that's how strict this is. So I just wanna make sure that you're aware. We're trying to give you the factual information of what you're gonna run into. Mm -hmm. Susan, I don't know if you want to try to yeah. translate what so, I said. Okay, yeah. So, ang, uh, ang patakaran po is that ibabase nila ba, uh, ang, uh, sa income na ifinalyo sa inyong tax return ng 2019. So, ang inyong kita ay dapat hindi lalagpas sa 2.5 billion or hindi bababa sa $1,000. Okay. And then for nonprofits, it's the same structure for 501c3s and c6s and you to qualify same thing between a thousand dollars and 2.5 million and you have to file 990s if you don't have 990s lendistry will not look at it yeah yeah so paalala ho pa sa para sa mga non-profits kailangan kayo ay nag-file ng form 990 ng 2019 and again ang uh, minimum na kita ay dapat isang libo eksakto and dapat ay meron kayong 501c3 or 501 non non-profit entity. Okay, perfect. All right, so eligibility requirements. As you can see, uh, there's lots of text here. I'm not going to read it all, but you must meet the definition of an um, eligible small business, which we're going to go over. Uh, your business has to have been active as of June 1st, mm -hmm. 2019. This is a hard set date. If you started your business after June 1st, 2019, you do not qualify for this grant. Your business must be impacted by COVID-19, uh, the health and safety restrictions such as business interruptions or business closures due to the pandemic. 
Applicants will be required to certify eligibility, including that the grant will be used for the specific applicant and that such applicant with the highest revenue. So if you have multiple locations and franchises and all that great stuff, um, you need to apply only for the location or franchise that has the highest revenue. And then you also must provide organizational documents, which we'll go over, as well as a government photo issue ID. So ang inyong uh, negosyo ay dapat nag, uh, uh, bukas ng June 1st, 2019. At kayo ay dapat na-impact ng COVID-19 because of health and safety restrictions or, or na-interrupt ang inyong business or na-isara because ng COVID-19 pandemic. At kailangan nyo pong i-certify ang inyong eligibility na kayo ay dapat, dapat na makakuha ng grant. At inyong pinapangako na ang, ang inyong makukuhang grant ay gagamitin lamang sa tamang paraan. And uh, ang mga aplikante na maraming businesses or by franchise or iba't ibang location, kayo ay uh, allowed na mag-apply sa isang lokasyon lamang at pipiliin nyo ang pinakamataas na kita ng uh, branch or location. At kailangan nyo pong magpadala, magpadala or mag-submit ng mga dokumento at acceptable government-issued photo ID, gaya ng passport or state uh, you know, ID. All right, and then the revenue verification. So this is where you're going to get off your IRS tax form. Uh, so... Um, So gross sales, and this is a line item. It's different per entity, uh, depending on the entity that you are. So line 1C for 1120C or S, those of you who know that you're an S Corp or C Corp, it's line 1C. Line 3 for Schedule C, which is independent contractors, sole, sole proprietors, the Ubers, the Lyft, stuff like that. Uh, that is line 3. Uh, line 1C for Form 1065 for partnerships. Line 1C and line 2. For Schedule F for farming businesses, Line 12 for nonprofits, and Schedule E is not available or not sorry, not eligible. Schedule E is not eligible. Yeah. So, para sa pagbeberipikasyon ng inyong kita, uh, ang base ho dito ay sa IRS tax form. So, para sa mga corporate returns 1120 or 112S for S corporation. Uh, line 3 on IRS schedule for single member or sole proprietorship. Uh, line 1C for 1065 for partnerships. And then line 1C, line 2 on schedule para sa mga pang agricultural negosyo. And uh, line 12 on form 990 para sa non-profits. Sino man ang nag-file ng uh, schedule E, hindi ho, po, hindi ho kayo pwedeng mag-apply. Okay, so... Just so you guys know, again, it, it is gross revenue. It's not your net profit. It is the gross revenue of your businesses. And for nonprofits, I have seen the question and we've asked a few times, does in-kind count? We're still waiting to get an answer. So I apologize if we haven't got you that answer, but we don't know the answer to that question either. But we, we will ask again, because I know I've seen that a few times and I know that that could be frustrating. Um, so we, we do see it. We do send all these questions to Lendistry every day, um, but we will definitely try to get that answered. Um, and then just one more thing, If you are, um, if, if you've changed ownership in your business, I know I've seen that a few times of you either bought the business or you inherited the business. Um, as long as you can prove that the business was in operation prior to June 1st, even if you were not necessarily the, the owner, you either bought it or you inherited it or something happened, um, you would still qualify as well. You would, they would ask you for an explanation and you'd be able to, then that's when you would satisfy and prove that part, so, okay. Just want to move on. So ineligible businesses, you have to have a physical location in California. Um, you have to be a 501c3 or c6 and file a 990. If, without a 990, you wouldn't qualify. And I know that somebody asked the question about 990N and I will find out. Um, so let me, again, I have that written, we're writing down these questions. Um, I'm not sure the difference of a 990 and a 990N as far as what Lendistry would be looking at. So let me find out for you. Um, government entities are not eligible unless you're a part of a Native American tribe. Um, if you're engaged in political lobbying or activities, passive business and investment companies, churches and other religious institutions. And then one of the questions that we learned today or answers we got back was if you run a school or a preschool out of a church, um, would you qualify? You would if that school files a 990. So that's kind of the caveat to that. So just to make sure that you're aware, 
That's what they're looking for. Um, financial businesses primarily engaged in the business of lending are not, are not eligible or affiliated businesses. And I won't read all the ones on the right side, but you know, you guys can kind of see what, what is and what isn't. Um, and Susan, I don't know if you want to try to translate yeah. some of what I said. Yeah. So, ako mga hindi karapat dapat na mag-apply ay ang mga negosyo na walang physical na lokasyon sa California. Ang mga non-profit na hindi restrado na 501c3, 501c3, or hindi nag-file ng 990. Mga entities ng gobyerno, mga negosyo na pangunahin na nakibagahagi sa political o influensyang aktibidades, uh, passive businesses or kumpanya ng investment, mga simbahan at iba pang institusyon ng relihiyon at uh, mga illegal na business base sa federal, state, at local na batas, negosyo na, na bulgar or sexual or in nature, negosyo na hindi ka nais-nais sa lipunan na o aktibidades na mga harang or mag negosyo na nagihigpit sa pagtangkilik dahil sa ila, ibang rason maliban sa kapasitan at mga haka-haka na negosyo. Perfect. And just so you guys know, when I say 990, those are for non-profits because I yes. see that that question popping mm -hmm. up. It's yeah. it's for for-profit businesses, you would not file a 990. Mm -hmm. And just yeah. to make sure everybody understands, home-based businesses are eligible. So mm -hmm. I have seen a couple of questions if I run out of my home, you're eligible, you would just use yeah. your home address. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we're gonna skip to the, the next slide. So the use of funds, uh, so eligible use of funds. So it's only those costs incurred due to COVID-19 pandemic and the health and safety restrictions such as business interruptions or business closures um, as a result to the COVID-19 pandemic. So as far as what you can use the funds for, you can use it for all employee expenses, including payroll costs, healthcare benefits, paid sick, medical or family leave and insurance premiums. All overhead costs, uh, working capital, including rent, utilities, mortgage, principal and interest payments, um, and uh, costs associated with reopening business operations after being fully or partially closed due to the state mandated COVID-19 health and safety restrictions. And then any costs associated with complying with COVID-19 federal, state, local guidelines for reopening re uh, with required safety protocols. And then um, any other COVID-19 related expenses not already covered for the same period. So, ang paggamit ng pondo, ang lahat ng gastos na sa empleyado, gaya ng payroll, healthcare benefits, paid sick leave medical, um, insurance premiums, working capital, um, gaya ng renta, utilidad, mortgage interest, bayad sa utang, gastos mula sa muling pagbubakas ng operasyon pagkatapos maisara dahil sa utos ng Estado, dahil sa COVID-19 na, na restrictions, and gastos sa basta sa base sa pagsunod sa COVID-19 federal, state, or local na pagbukas na karapat dapat na safety protocols gaya ng kagabitan, plexiglass barriers, outdoor dining, PPE supplies, testing at gastos sa employee training, at ano pa mang gastos na hindi na-cover ng inyong uh, uh, unang uh, for, ng, yung, bag, ng loans. So the uh, ineligible use of funds are human resource expenses for the state share of Medicaid, employee bonuses or severance mm -hmm. pay, taxes, any legal settlements, any personal expenses or other expenses unrelated to the COVID-19 impacts, expenses for repairs, damages that are already covered by insurance, and any reimbursement to donors for donated items or services. Yeah. So mga hindi karapat dapat nagamit ng pond ay mga sumusunod. Human resource gastos para sa state share ng Medicaid or severance pay ng empleyado, mga taxes o buwis, legal na pag-aareglo, personal na gastos na hindi related sa COVID-19, gastos sa pag-aayos ng pinsala na sakop ng siguro, ang ibinalik na bayad sa, uh, sa mga nagbibigay ng mga items or servisyo. Um, we're going to actually, instead of going through pieces of the application, we're going to take you right to it because we know that there's a lot of questions around it. Scott, do you have that on yours? Yes. Scott's uh, going to pull it up and we're going to go line by line and try to answer each question. Um, so hopefully this will answer a lot of your questions. And <clears throat> keep in mind, we see you guys, you know, with, with uh, what Lendistry, you know, trying to go through the site. 
we understand that it is overworked and over there's it's oversubscribed at this moment too many people going through it and no one's able to get through that process our suggestion to you is to wait until tomorrow or the you know the weekend you know to fill this out it is not this this first round does not actually is incompleted until january 8th they're not going to look at anybody's application until that time so if you give it a day or two i know that's sometimes hard um to to, to wait but wait a couple of days let them work through the technology let them work through all the people trying to get through quickly and it should be much easier for you to use and hopefully you can have all your documents ready you'll see these questions and you'll be ready to go so hopefully that that helps and like i said it, nothing's going to happen until january 9th anyways so you have until the 8th to get this in yeah yeah thank you oh go ahead uh susan if you want to Okay. So, kayo ho na nagda-try na mag-access ng uh, ng uh, computer, huwag ho kayo ma-frustrate kung hindi kayo makago through because lahat ng mga application ay gather up to January 8 and it's only January 9 na, na titignan nila ang mga application. So, ang rekomendasyon ay gather nyo ang inyong mga dokumento para kapag kayo mag-apply kompleto ang inyong mga dokumento. Awesome, thanks. So uh, as, as Mike and Susan mentioned, uh, round one is open from today to January 8th. Mm -hmm. Please use this link to apply. There's a lots of stuff in the queue, the Q&A in the chat that this link is not working. So the link is still live, it's still working. It's a little slow right now. Um, as Mike mentioned, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make sense to apply right now today. I would apply tomorrow or the next day. Again, you have until mm -hmm. the 8th. It's not first come first serve basis. This will help a lot of uh, you out as far as uploading documents and trying to apply is that if you, if you wait a day or two or three or closer to the eighth, then it'd be better for you and it won't take as much time and you won't have as many problems. But here's the website. So when you click on the website, there is some discrepancies do you sign into an account, which you don't have? And the answer is no, don't sign in. Just click on the left-hand side where it says find grants now. Mm -hmm. Susan, do you wanna yeah. possibly? So kapag pumunta po kayo sa, sa website, hanapin nyo po ang section na nagsasabing find grants now at yun po ang inyong uh, ilag in. All right, yeah, so uh, so when you click on um, that website as our portal, and once it goes into this website here, just click on Find Grants Now. Don't sign in, because it's not mm -hmm. you're not at that point yet. Mm -hmm. uh, the next, what you'll see here is, there's two things that'll pop up. This only shows one, but at the top, it'll say for profits. And then on the bottom, it'll say non-profits. So make sure that the, it says grant program for for-profits or for nonprofits, depending on what you are, uh, your entity is. And um, this is the, where you apply now. This is where you click the button, apply now. So, maaari hong uh, importante na identify nyo kung anong inyong uh, status. Kung kayo ay for-profit, make sure na nasa uh, window kayo ng, um, where it says apply now for for profits. Kung non-profit naman ho kayo, ganun din po. It should say for uh, grant program for non-profits. Awesome. All right. So um, here is the first, uh, when you click apply now, this is the first uh, sec section that comes up. There's about five sections. We're going to go through that. And that's where you would actually get to the end and submit. So in the first section, as you can see, it just asks for your name, last name, first and last, your email. It asks that you confirm your email, your phone number, and you have to confirm your phone number, and then your business name and business zip code. And then you should accept the box at the bottom where it says SMS text policy so that you can receive text message updates from Lendistry if that's what you prefer. Yeah. So, application po, kailangan ilagay niyo ang inyong pangalan, ang inyong email address, at pakiconfirm po ang inyong phone number, at ilagay niyo ang pangalan ng inyong, inyong business at ang inyong zip code. Importante po na i-check niyo ang box that says, I accept the SMS text policy. Very important. Awesome. So then when you finish this first... Um 
when you finish this first section, you'll click continue. And then you'll go to this next session where they ask for owner details and you have to okay. fill in everything with an asterisk as you see okay. here. So again, it's your first last name. This will transfer over, but then it asks where your, uh, where your city is, mm -hmm. your state, zip code, your county, the owner date of birth, the social security number of the owner, and then your ownership percentage. Mm -hmm. um, and then you click, I accept the terms and conditions, and then yeah. go to the next screen. Yeah. So, pangalawang uh, page po, andito po ang uh, information about sa inyong business. So make sure kompleto po ang information at in, ilagay kung uh, ilan ang perse, percentage ng inyong ownership, lagay inyong social security number at saka kung saan located ang inyong business. And again, importante pong i-check yung box na says I accept the terms and conditions para po mag-go through ang inyong application. So the next, uh, the next section, um, I didn't fully fill it out here, but the next session is your business information. So it asks for your business name. If you do not have a DBA, you need to type none. If you don't type none, it won't allow you to go forward. So you need to uh, make sure you choose type none if you don't have a DBA. Your business EIN, um, if you don't have that, that would be your social security number your business phone number, your business type. So there's different business types from corporation to sole prop with, without employees, sole prop with employees. And we're, we're not gonna go through all those right now, but there's different business types. If you have questions about that, we can help you with that. There's a state of incorporation if you're incorporated. Um, there's also business address. You are not able to use a PO box. You cannot use a PO box address. It has to be a physical address. And then as the rest of the information here, your city, county, state, zip, the date you established your business, and then your business URL. If you don't have one, you type none. Okay. So, sa information ho ng business, Make sure na kompleto ang information. Lahat na may asterisk ay kailangang filapan ang um, information. Uh, make sure na ang business address ay uh, kompleto at, at dapat ay may uh, information. Hindi ho kami tumatagap ng PO Box. At kailangan ilagay kung saan kayo nag-incorporate, uh, kung anong state at kung anong date ang inyong business ay na-establish. Kung wala ho kayong business website or URL, ilagay po na uh, none. All right. So the next section is uh, how we can help you. Uh, so the purpose of the grant um, and then uh, your amount requested. So when you click on check eligibility over here on the right for uh, amount requested, It'll, it'll show you that chart that we showed you earlier mm -hmm. where if you have 1,000 to 100,000, you qualify for this, 100 to mm -hmm. a million, you qualify for this, and then a million to 2.5, you qualify for this. That's what the check eligibility um, box is for. Um, and then um, if you are creating new jobs with this grant, you will, uh, you'll put how many jobs you're going to possibly create with this grant money. Um, and I know there's a lot of questions about that, so we will we'll have to take those one off. Uh, the annual revenue is is based on your tax returns, as we uh, told you before, as far as depending on your entity, the number of part-time employees and the number of jobs retained. Meaning, if you get this grant, say you have five employees and you get this grant, and it's going to help you retain those five employees, that's what jobs retained is. Yeah. So, sa pahina ho na ito, ilalagay niyo po ang uh, purpose ng grant. Kung magkano ang inyong uh, hinihingi, uh, i-check niyo po yung portion ng uh, check eligibility because base sa inyong uh, annual revenue or taon ng kita, doon mo malalaman kung magkano ang inyong grant na marireceive. And uh, i-indicate kung ilan ang inyong full-time employees or kung ang grant na ito ay makakatulong para ba i-retain or ma-keep nyo yung mga empleyado nyo. And kung ang grant na ito ay makakatulong para kayo ibang create ng job. 
So the next section is your business demographics. Mm -hmm. um, who is your customer base? Uh, so we've, we've been trying to go over this and explain it to you. So B2B is business to business. You only do business with other businesses. Mm -hmm. B to C is business to uh, consumer. So you do business with individuals instead of organizations or both. You, you sell to some businesses and you sell to some individuals. Um, it's a mix. That's what B to B and B to C and both means. Mm -hmm. So sa pahina ho ito na business demographics, indicate nyo po kung anong kliyente ang inahanap nyo or kung anong sinisilbihan nyo. Uh, anong klaseng business meron kayo kung ito ba ay uh, pag-aari ng uh, babae or disabled or kung ano yung uh, ethnicity nyo uh, kung kayo ay veteran business or kung kayo ay franchise at iba pa at kung ano ang purpose ng business nyo so um so, so that's uh, besides the customer base um, as you can see on here for business demographics it wants to know your NAICS code N-A-I-C-S code. Mm -hmm. There's a link here. You can click on here. It'll take you to the website to find your next code where you can type in your the type of business or your business industry and help kind of find the code for you for your specific business type and industry. Um, it asks, like, what does your business do? Tell us a little bit more about that. And then it wants to know what type of ethnicity you are, if you have a rural business or uh, a disabled business owner, women-owned, veteran, and mm -hmm. then race or franchise. Yeah. So again, sa pahinahin ito, may tinatanong din about Nike's code. Nike's code. So para malaman nyo, i-click nyo po itong link para makita nyo sa website na ito. And paalala lang ho, kailangan lahat ng mga items na may asterisk kailangan kumpletuhin niyo ang sagot kung hindi mag hindi maggo through ang inyong uh, uh, application it will not go to the next page all right so disclosures is the last page before you press submit and again this is just submitting your application what we're going through right now so it says, uh, is your business 51% minority or veteran owned? Minority uh, means a uh, person of color owned, small business means uh, the following racial or ethnic groups as identified by the applicants. And then it names them there. Uh, what was the gross revenue for the business? April 1st, 2019 to September 30th, 2019. So if you have trouble finding this number or know how to get this number, please reach out to us and we can help you. What was the gross revenue for business between April 1st, 2020 and September 30th, 2020? Um, as you can see here, what they're trying to do is do year over year analysis for those quarters from April 1st to um, September. So, sa pahina ito ng disclosure, tinatanong nila kung anong klaseng uh, business meron kayo. Uh, also, tinatanong ang inyong uh, gross revenue from April 1st to September 30, 2019 kumpara sa April 1st, 2020 at saka September 30, 2020. At tinatanong din kung kailangan nyo ng uh, business or technical assistance at kung ang inyong uh, business ay kailangan ng, uh, ng loan and kung kayo ay nakakuha ng COVID-19 related emergency grants da uh, ano nung nakaraang mga sham na buwan. Thank you. So as you go to the website and you fill out these five uh, sections, you will press submit and then that will you will, then after you press submit successfully, then you'll receive an email from uh, Lendistry um, and if you haven't been able to get through this part or you press submit and you did not receive an email, you can, um, you can reach out to us um, and we can help you walk through that process. Um, but it could, it could take a uh, Lendistry up to an hour or two to send you an email from this submission. And then once you get this submission uh, submitted you after the email, then you'll be able to upload some documents. So you're not uploading documents on this application. So pag nakumpleto niyo po ang uh, limang pahina na ito, 
at uh, nag-go through ang inyong mga uh, paperwork. Then, uh, ang Lendistry ay bibigyan kayo ng email. So, basically, uh, ginagather lang nila ang mga uh, information. So, make sure na kompleto. And hindi pa ho kayo mag upload ng uh, mga documents na kailangan nila. Okay? All right. So we, um, Mike, you're muted. Uh, so we have, uh, we have over 1,400 questions in the well, queue. Let me, so let me, let me take you. Um, I have a couple of things. Let me just move this out of the way. Can just you wanted see? To tell, yeah, we have 1,400 questions in the queue. We're not going to get to all of them today, but we do have all of our information here that we're sending out to you. Yeah. And so can you see the screen, the self-certification? Yes. Okay. So this is the self-certification document that you will download. Um, from the site and I'll show you where to get that in just a second. So you'll download this and then you'll fill this out and then this will be part of your upload. But this is what it looks like. Um, so it's basically just asking you questions of the undersigned signatory is a duly authorized representative of Mike, the business. Mike, I'm, so, I'm sorry to interrupt. Would it be possible to zoom in a little bit on the screen? Uh, it's a little bit too small. Yeah, absolutely. Are you able to zoom in? And we received some comments. I technologically challenged, but I could figure that part this out. This is yeah. perfect. Much better. Thank Not you. Better? There you go. Yeah, I don't know why you guys could see it. I could see it just fine, but yeah, <laughs> kidding. Um, so, and we'll say, I'll put this link in the in the box in just a second, but this is what you're gonna check off. So it's a little, you know, you put an X or a check, um, it's all PDF. So you can, it's already ready to go. Um, so it's just gonna ask you questions of the principal office in California. All the questions we've been going through, this is you self-certifying that everything is true and correct. That's mm -hmm. basically what it's asking you for. Um, and there's a different one for a nonprofit oh. than there is for the for-profit. Um, and so as you go through it, it's, it's two pages. And then the third page is your signature, your name, the applicant's business name and address, your EIN, social or ITIN, your title and the date, right? And you can automatically fill this in signature. You can just type in your name, right? So it allows you to do all that. Um, and then you're going to save it. And then this will be part of your PDF. Um, I know that a lot of questions have come around, um, nonprofits, whether, whether the board chair or the CEO would, would sign this, um, it could be either one. So you need to make that choice of who does it. Um, you might have in your in your um, protocols and processes and procedures, it might be always the, the president CEO or it might always be the board chair, whomever you choose. Um, and there is a slightly different application for a nonprofit and I'll take you to that right now. Um, so let me just close out of this. So this is the homepage for the careliefgrant.com. Everybody could at least get to this for now. And I know you can't get much further than that. Um, so as you go down, you do have to click at, when you apply either by county or by language. And so this is a confusing part and I don't exactly know why it's like this, but it is what it is. Um, and the, the state and Lendistry wanted you to understand that there's people here to help you. So when you choose your county, let's just say you happen to choose Alpine County, um, all 58 counties are here. You have to go through a partner. That's it. There, there's, you don't have to pay anything for it. You don't have to become a member of that partner. It's just to kind of show did, if they helped you, great. If you want help from them, they'll know that you're going through that site, but you just click on apply now. Doesn't matter which partner you choose, it all ultimately goes right into the Lendistry platform. Um, but you do have to click on one of the partners. That's just the way the system is set up. So let's just say you happen to choose the SPDC and you click on apply now. This is in Alpine. Then it will take you right to the grant part. Now, you don't wanna do sign into your account. You wanna click on find grants now. So when you click on find grants now, this is the page that you're gonna to get to. And on the left-hand side, you'll see this is the for-profit side. And then on the right side, this is the nonprofit side, which is slightly different. Um, and it does allow you to download that form that I showed you right here, that, uh, that application certification. But this will give you all the things that you're gonna need um, for each one, but it's slightly different. It will also give you Scott's number down here on the bottom. So feel free to call him. I think he's already received about 10,000 people that have, that have called him today. So you know he could definitely use a few more. Um, if you, you know, a lot of the questions that I'm seeing, if you received idle PPP, a city grant, a county grant, a philanthropic grant, you still are eligible. You just spend this money on something else. And it's, it's really, you know, your rent, your payroll, operating expenses, inventory, right? There's so many things that you could have spent this money on. Um, and then you keep your receipts, right? You're going to keep your receipts for three years. You're not going to upload your receipts into this, like some of the other grants that, that we've done. Um, <clears throat> so it should hopefully be pretty straightforward, but I understand that you know people cannot get through right now. Um, and like I said, my my suggestion would be to wait a couple of days, let 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 it kind of subside a little bit, 
and then go into it. And then if you need help, our number's right there. Um, there's numbers everywhere. All these organizations are here to help you. Um, any of these groups, let me just go back a little bit. Um, you know, so whichever county, uh, I'm just gonna close out of this. This happens to be Alpine, which I apologize, I don't even know where Alpine is, but I'm gonna assume it's up in Northern California. Um, <laughs> it's in the six, yes. Yep, perfect. So that's in Scott's area. But all these organizations are here to help you. No one should charge you anything. You should not pay anything to fill out this grant application. Um, and I realize there's a lot of pieces to it, but hopefully when you're actually able to go through the application, hopefully it's pretty easy and, and pretty straightforward. Um, but with that, let's try, I'm gonna try to answer some of the questions. I know we see a lot of questions, um, but again, right? If you're, gonna, if you're gonna apply for PPP in the second round, this doesn't, this won't, you're not excluded from this or PPP. Um, they're just very different things. Um, so, so a lot of questions on the nonprofit side, Mike, again, like who's, who, whose ID do you use, you know, for the nonprofit? Yeah. So either the president or CEO or the board chair, it's up to you to choose. You know, you might have that already part of your, you know, your requirements within your nonprofit, but it's up to you to choose which one. Uh, my suggestion would probably be to go through your president and CEO, but that's just, you know, my thought on it. Um, and it is going to ask you, you know, grants that you've received in the past, whether it's idle, PPP, city, county, fill that in. It's not going, there's no qualifier based on how much you've already received, whether or not you get this grant or not. They're just wanting to find out how much other people have, have received um, for this. So, um, so all, to... all, um, all entities are, are able to apply uh, C Corps, S Corps, LLCs, partnerships, limited partnerships, professional corporations, 1099, contractors, self, uh, self-employed, Schedule Cs, all those entities are able to apply. Um, and um, just Schedule E is not eligible. So those of you that have a Schedule E, if you're a real estate, um, you have passive income for a real estate company, then it's not eligible. Yeah, and if, if, you're a, if you're an independent contractor or you don't have a DBA, that's quite okay. It would just be your name, right? So it's, you know, I know that those are a lot of questions around the businesses that don't have DBAs and don't have, you know, our independent contractors that it's just yourself. Um, you would just put your name there. Yeah. Yeah. Now there's, yeah. yeah. So questions about, so this is a grant. It's a, uh, this grant is um, administered through the state of California. Lendistry is the only lender um, and there are partners. So the only way to apply is through californiareliefgrant.com. Choose a county and then a partner. Um, the link that we sent you for our partnership um, is running slow. Um, and as we have mentioned, um, it's, uh, it's not first come first serve. So please apply anytime from now till the eighth or tomorrow to the eighth. Uh, this, uh, this is a grant. It doesn't have to be paid back, but the, uh, the, there's questions about it. will it be taxed. Yes. Um, this, this, uh, grant is, uh, is, is, uh, taxed and, uh, you'll have to file that with your CPA or professional accountant, um, before uh, 2022 taxes. Yeah. So ito pong, uh, <clears throat> ito po ay uh, isang grant at kayo ay dapat na mag-apply through Lendistry at uh, sa iba't ibang ka-partner nila. At uh, it, itong grant na ito ay hindi babayaran pero kayo po ay kailangan uh, i-file uh, sa taxes by uh, February uh, 2022. Kayo ay uh, bibigyan ng abiso. Okay, let me, um, so this is this is the, the scorecard that everybody's going to get. So Lendistry has created a, a, a scorecard for everybody that as you fill this out, they're, basic, they're basing everything off of four qualifiers. Um, and then there's, I'm sure there's some other things as well. And the proprietary, so we actually don't know the complete system, but this is what we've been told as well. So the first thing is, if, you, if your business or nonprofit is located in an area impacted most by the effects of COVID-19 and the regional stay-at-home orders, as we know, pretty much every county has been affected by this. So I'm going to assume that's a lot of businesses and nonprofits. Um, businesses impacted the most financially based on gross revenue losses. Um, certain impacted industries, including retail, food, and hospitality, health and wellness, <laughs> and personal care. And then underserved small business groups, meaning women-owned, minority persons of color, veteran-owned, um, it could be LMI or rural communities. So all of this, every everybody that applies will be given a scorecard and kind of percentage based on how you fit into these categories and a few others. Um, so that is that is what they're basing all of this off of. It's not a lottery. 
it's kind of a scorecard system. Um, and so that's, that's what they're evaluating everything from. Ang grants na ito ay uh, may mga uh, may apat na criteria. Uh, una ang mga negosyo ang nasa lokasyon na apektado ng COVID-19. Pangalawa ay ang mga negosyo na apektado ng mabuti base sa pagkawala o pagkalugi pagkalugi ng negosyo. Ang mga apektadong uh, industriya gaya ng retail, food and hospitality, uh, personal and beauty uh, salons, uh, spas, barbershop, at ang mga underserved na small businesses. Okay, so I'm just going to go through a couple of the questions that you've asked um, that we've seen. So we're going to go through a couple of the FAQs that we go through um, daily because I think a lot of these questions that you're asking you'll find here. So first, everyone will receive a text message and an email after they've gone mm -hmm. through through your application, and you'll be given either that you've been funded or you're on a wait list or that you've been denied based on a qualifier that you didn't that you that you were disqualified based on some qualification. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, I went backwards. Hold on one second. Oh, for some reason. Um, some people asked about the bank information and Scott, let me make sure that I heard this correct as well this morning from Lendistry. Um, they don't need you to fill in your bank account information um, on this initial application. So you could actually bypass that, correct, Scott? Yes, you can, yeah. So my suggestion would be to not put in your bank information in the initial, um, just you know, leave it empty. If you're awarded the grant, they'll come back to you and ask you for it. But they've had a lot of issues and people have had a lot of issues of linking your bank because you're gonna put in your bank account number, the routing number, it's gotta connect directly to it. Because what happens if you receive the grant, they ACH the money right into your bank account. But our suggestion, and that's what we got from Lendistry, is to leave that empty for the first round. And if, the, if you are awarded, then you can go back and put that information in. Para sa unang tipunin or sa unang round, huwag nyo pong ilagay ang banking information nyo muna according sa kay sa Lendistry. Total kapag ka na-approve ang inyong loan, then they will ask for it. But for the first round, do not put yung inyong uh, banking information. Okay. Um, I'm just going to kind of skip through some of them. As we stated, if you received other funding, PPP, IDOL, city grant, county grant, philanthropic grant, you are still eligible for this. So, um, and this is a taxable grant. So if you receive this grant, you will re, you will have uh, have to pay taxes on it, and it's based on your your corporate income tax or your your personal income tax uh, rate. So that will it, it'll depend on how much you pay and what your percentage rate is. Okay. Um, let's see here. You you will not provide receipts, but you do need to keep them for three years. Um, if you're undocumented, you can still apply for this. You would need to um, upload I-10 verification IRS form CP-565. Um, if you're a real estate company broker, I know I've seen a lot of questions around, around this. Um, if you're a real estate professional who files a Schedule C on their personal tax returns, you're eligible. If you file a Schedule E for passive income, you would not be eligible. So again, if you file Schedule C, you're eligible. If you file Schedule E, you would not be eligible. Now, I know that there's some that file Schedule C and E. Um, we haven't heard back, but I would I would apply and see what happens. Um, you know, I, we haven't gotten an answer on that one yet either. Um, let's see here. Again, so as you're submitting information, you're only going to submit information, whether you're for profit or nonprofit for one person in your business or nonprofit. It's not for if there's multiple people uh, ownership or if there's multiple you know, board members or however you decide to do it as a nonprofit, it's just going to be for one person, okay? And so only one person can apply. Um, let's see, that is pretty much it as far as this, but let me let me just kind of go through some of these questions. Scott, I don't know if you've seen anything, or Manal, have you seen any, any questions that kind of stick out to you? Um, you know, I know- no, it's just, uh, That question that comes up a lot, is it 50, 50% uh, husband, wife, who applies? Uh, so that's coming up a lot. Yeah. Again, you you choose um, and you choose to answer. You know, they didn't really say, you know, it should be 51% is really kind of what qualifies as, 
you know, if it's women owned, it would be 51% ownership, or if it's veteran owned, it should be 51. It should be 50 plus one to show majority ownership to qualify for some of these areas. But, you know, ultimately you're going to need to choose, you know, where you're, where you're at. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to read through. So we, we have yeah, so, yeah, go ahead. roughly, roughly about 16, 1700 questions. So Sorry for, you know. Yeah, so it is it is taxable, but we don't know what the tax is. And it all that really depends on your tax, you know, brackets. And it also depends, you have to talk to your CPA. You know, something you have to worry about in 2021, just 2022. So uh, regarding the tax, we don't have all that information. We won't until we won't until really next year. Yeah. And only one business can, you can only apply one time, right? And so they're going to do a lot of cross-checking around social security numbers, bank accounts, right? So um, businesses, so you can only apply one time. So make sure that that you understand that. If you were, if you if you apply multiple times, they may kick everybody, all of your applications out. So I just want to make sure that you understand that. And Mike, we received multiple questions regarding gig economy uh, entrepreneurs such as yeah. Lyft and Uber drivers. Would you mind addressing? Sure. So you're oh. whether you're you know 1099 independent contractor, you absolutely will still qualify for this. You would apply. Um, they're they're going to look for some kind of a license. Most likely, if you don't have one, you could just put NA. If they happen to pull you as far as receiving a grant, then you would explain. If you, I'm, I'm assuming that you may may have a either a business license or you know a Department of Transportation license or something. Um, if you don't, then then it's going to have to come down to Lendistry in the state trying to figure out what they would accept as far as some kind of permit or license from a state or government entity because that's the one thing that they're looking for. Um, I know there's a lot of questions around the nonprofits in the 990, 990S, 990EZ. I will try to get you that information. I, unfortunately, we haven't been told. We've asked that multiple times, um, but we will definitely try to get you that information. Um, and my suggestion um, is, you know, if all you have is a 990EZ or 990S or, or N, no, I'm not sure the designations, um, just, you know, apply, put it in. And if it's not acceptable, then they'll come back to you and let you know. Um, if you happen to be awarded, but you know, if, if we don't get you an answer and you're not sure, my suggestion would be don't wait, you know, make sure that you do apply before January 8th and, you know, let, let's let them tell you no versus you not filling out because you don't know. Oops, sorry. Didn't mean to Mike, go. Mike, one more, yeah. one more yeah. question that seems to keep repeating itself. The question is, um, has to do with, uh, you know, is there a time by when I need to use those grants? Is there a specific time frame by when I need to use the funds from the grant? Yeah, so we have not been told that there's a certain time that you're supposed to use this by. Scott, did I, I don't think I missed anything. No, there's no specific time you need to use this by. As of this time, we don't really know that answer. Yeah, so there may be, you know, so what's going to happen if you receive the grant, there will be a grant agreement that will probably lay out some of these parameters. Um, but I think the hope, too, is that, you know, you may have already paid for some rent, so it would cover some of that. I mean, you know, there's a lot of different ways. Maybe you've already spent the money, and this will just kind of backfill what you've already put out of your own pocket or different ways like that as well. So, um, yeah. Uh, I know there's a lot of questions yeah, around. I'll stuff around that certification. They're wondering if you can. Oh, yeah. Put it in the chat or something. They yeah. A lot of people around the certification. Yeah. Give me one second. I will grab that for everybody. Yep. Yeah. And then, um, again, uh, you know, there's, there's about 1,800 questions. We're not going to get to all of them. The ones in the chat. So we are sending everybody to our website, californiasvdc.org, um, and you just click on learn more about the relief program, and you can go there and you can find the local SBDC uh, network to you. You can also find apply here for the application. Um, again, it's not first come, first serve, so you don't need to apply today. I would wait till tomorrow. There's a lot of mm -hmm. slowness and lagging going on with the websites right now. So I just put it in the chat and I will get, give me a second to get the nonprofit one too. As far as what you uh, want to submit, as far as documents, what you need to upload, um, they are, um, they are, they are asked specifically to you when you, when you apply and you press submit, they're also on that application page, what documents to submit. But as Mike was saying, um, they may not ask for it all up, all up front. They may ask for uh, your articles, your organizational documents, they may not ask, or here it is, it's right here, yeah. So these are some of the um, real quick article, uh, real quick uh, documents that they're going to be asking for to upload. Um, but uh, if you don't upload them all at the same time, it's totally okay. You can, you can piecemeal it together. Yeah, a lot of people asking questions about 
whether you use your tax ID number or your EIN or your social. So if you have an EIN, you absolutely use that. If you don't, then you have to use your social security number. Yeah. Um, nice. But you're probably going to want to use your EIN. You ha- you should be using your EIN if you have one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I do have up here the documents that they're going to want to see. Keep in mind where it says additional documents for both sides. Um, they don't need all of those. You know, it's just one of whether it's your articles of incorporation, certificate of, certificate of occupancy, a DBA, a business license. If you don't have any of that, it could be a seller's permit. Um, it could be a lot of different things. So just, you know, keep in mind, they want to work with you. So don't, don't be, you know, if you don't happen to see the exact piece, you know, still apply. Don't not apply because you don't see something. And if you don't have an, if you're not getting an answer, you know, that's just more reason to apply and then, you know, let us help you. You know, I mean, our job is to be your advocate to try to help you, help them understand that not everybody has all these things, or maybe they don't have any of these things and there could be other things. Yeah. And if you submitted your application and you accidentally made a mistake, uh, we'll put in the chat, the phone number that you can call Lendistry. They have a call center. Uh, also you can email them. There's a email and a call center that you can, um, you can call Lendistry specifically if it's a tech problem, not a, if it's a loading issue, then you just have to wait an hour or so, or maybe tomorrow, like we're talking. Um, but if it's not a loading issue, you accidentally, you know, typed in the wrong cell phone number or email or whatever, then you could, um, you can email them or call them. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to put that in the chat right now. Mm-hmm. I just did, Scott. Thank you. So it's the last it's the last um, question in the chat at the moment. Uh, but there's a phone number to call. And there's also an email. Um, when we had spoken to them today at about 9 o'clock, they said they there was about a 20-minute lag time from the time you call to the time they can answer you. So just so you're aware of that. And they're not open 24-7. I believe it was from 7 to 7. Right, Scott? 7 to 7. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's not, it's not 24-7 now. Yeah. So, uh, and if you're not getting anywhere, um, you know, definitely, you know, send an email to either Scott or myself, and we will try to help you the best we can of pushing that over to Lendistry as well. It's 6 to 6, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then and then after the new year, at next week, it's 7 to 7. Yeah. Okay. A couple of questions, too, I'm seeing. You know, it's asking about, like, if, how do I certify myself as a woman-owned business? For this, you don't need to be certified. You just would be a woman-owned business, right? So you yeah. will, you're will, you making that designation because you, if you're a female-owned business, um, then you just click the box that we're a female-owned business. So that's yeah. that's all that you would do. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to copy all these questions, Scott. So, so Mike, we do we received, send, yeah. Sorry, we received a couple of questions regarding how to complete the bank verification um, uh, You know, part of the process. So we've that? been told by Lendistry to not, submit not complete that until you've been awarded the grant so mm-hmm. in round in in this in this application you should not fill that in okay. so that is what lender lendistry has told us and there's been a lot of issues with that people filling it in and then it doesn't go anywhere and i think that's part of the reason because they'll come back if you happen to get the funding they'll come back to you or get awarded the grant they'll come back to you for that information Uh, yeah, we're gonna... any other questions you guys see Manal, Scott, they're all over the place. Uh, if you receive PVP and idle and other grant funds from city or local county counties, you still qualify for this grant. Uh, this is a grant. It's not a loan. It is, uh, you don't have to pay it back, but it is taxable. So, yeah. And one thing that I, that I have seen, if you apply in the first round and you don't get funded, you're automatically in the second round. So that's why we want everybody to apply by January 8th. So it gives you two chances, right? So the, in round one and in round two. Um, so we want you to apply by January 8th. And um, and again, uh, the best the best way to get a hold of us is through um, the email, uh, californiasvdc.org. I'm putting it, I put it in the chat probably 20 times. Uh, that is the best way to get a hold of us. Uh, possibly not going to get, um, you're not going to get an answer right away, but there's, there's emails that are, that are put out there, depending on where you are in the state, there's phone numbers, depending on where you're in the state. Uh, we're, we're doing our best as far as getting the answers to you as quickly as we can. We are currently only having one of these webinars per day. Um, but we, next week you we might have to upgrade that to a couple times a day. Uh, again, this goes until the eighth, the first round. So, 
you don't have to apply today. You can apply tomorrow or Saturday or Sunday or Monday. You still have plenty of time to apply for the first round. And uh, the site, the site's not down. It's just really slow, really lagging. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're trying to upload something, Lendistry has said that you could wait an hour or two uh, to wait to upload it. If you're having tech issues, uh, besides the upload, like something happened on the application, we put that information there as well. Um, yeah. Okay. Any other questions, Manal, that you see that we didn't get a chance to get into? And somebody says uh, the, they don't have an NAICS code. Well, all businesses have an NAICS code. If you're having trouble with the NAICS code or trying to find out your NAICS code, just please reach out to us. Again, as Mike stated, you should not be paying anybody to help you with this process to apply, mm -hmm. to submit your documents for any of that stuff. Uh, we're here for you at no cost. There's over 500 partners. If you go to find a partner, you can find any partner you want with any county. It doesn't have to be us. We're all working on this together. Uh, we're all here for you at no cost. Yeah. So, ang servisyong ito ay libre. So, hindi nyo kailangan magbayad kahit kanino para ma-process ang inyong aplikasyon. So, may mga limandaang uh, partners. So, make sure you connect with them. So, kay, ka, kami po yan dito para tumulong sa inyo. Thank you. Um, we will be back tomorrow as well. Tomorrow's presentation is in English and uh, Farsi as well. So, every day. We do it in multiple languages. Um, if you wanted English only, we will be doing that again on Sun. On is it Saturday? It's Friday, right? It, it's New Year. It's New Year's Day. Yeah, I guess that is that's Friday. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've lost track of days. Um, so yeah, on Friday we will be doing English only, and we'll be doing Spanish again on uh, Tuesday, as well. So just to want to make sure. So we're trying to do it in every language possible. Um, so I know that sometimes this can be tough to get through two languages, but we're trying to make sure that we're getting this information out to as many people as possible. So uh, thank you all very much. Um, if we didn't answer your, any of your questions or if you still have some more, please feel free, you know, reach out to us, reach out to Lendistry. Um, we just want people to apply and, you know, hopefully be successful through this grant program. So thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you so much, Susan, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year.